Welcome to worship at home for parents and kids on this second Sunday in Lent. And I think I remember how we do our blessing of God's holy name during Lent. So let's do it together, shall we? Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. And we're going to continue to sing our Lord have mercy like we did last week. So join with me. I'll sing it and you sing it back. Okay, here we go. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. In our special prayer called the Collect of the Day, we give thanks to God for his mercy. So let's pray together. Hope I hear some of you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I think I heard somebody. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. So here we go, a reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you very numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the father of many nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. I will be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring the land where you are now a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding. And I will be their God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. When someone tells someone else that they will do something for them or that something good is going to happen sometime in the future, what do we call that? We call it a promise. And these pussy willows that are on the altar during the season of Lent, they remind us that we serve a God who makes promises. Because right now, the pussy willows just have these little white buds on them. But as the weeks of Lent go on, those little white buds will start to turn into little flowers as spring gets closer 
and closer and closer. And with spring comes the season of Easter. And Easter is the celebration of God's greatest promise to us, the promise that in Jesus we have new life because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so when you see these pussy willows on the altar, watch for the little flowers to start to come out, the promise that spring is coming. And do you know what Lent means? Lent is from an old English word that means spring. The old English word is lengthen, and it's where we get our word lengthen because the days start to lengthen, they start to get longer. And so when we are in the season of Lent, we are moving towards spring and the promise of new life. And the greatest new life we have is in our Lord Jesus. Amen. We serve a God who makes promises and keeps those promises. So let's tell God that we love him and believe in him, shall we? I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus' love. I believe the Spirit, too, comes to teach us what to do. I believe that I can be kind and loving, Lord, like thee. Amen. Dear God, the pussy willows are a promise that spring is coming. And the cross of our Lord Jesus is the promise of new life to all who believe in him. We thank you, Lord, for the promises that you make to us. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to keep our promises to you. Our promise to love you with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. Our promise to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we pray for those who are our neighbors. The neighbors who live with us, our moms and dads, our brothers and sisters, those in our, who are in our families. We pray, Lord, for the neighbors who live around us, for the neighbors we go to school with and to work with, for the neighbors who are part of our church family. We pray, Lord, for all the human neighbors we may not even know, and we ask that you will bless and keep all people, especially those who are sick and suffering. Lord, we also promise to love ourselves, which means to know that you love us and to know that you created us and that you made us for a good purpose, for the purpose of serving you and sharing your love in the world. And so, Lord, help us to keep our promises to love you with all that we have and all that we are, to love our neighbors and to love ourselves as your creations. We thank you, Lord, for the greatest promise of all, new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. And now we pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Truth unchanged, it hath
today and I hope that today's service has been a blessing to you and I hope that maybe we'll even see you in the undercroft as we uh, gather together with our children's ministry today and so I uh, look forward to seeing you if you're able to come so now go in peace to love and serve the Lord thanks be to God